My name is Tebza and I'd like to welcome you to this monthly market preview and the review for the, for the month of October. I hope you guys have enjoyed our previous video when you were previewing the month of September. And today we are going to take a short period of time to now look at how it ran, how the market went for the month of October quickly and look at our view and our preview for the month of October. Yes, we do look at the Forex market, equity market where possible indices, commodities, metals, cryptocurrencies, and anything that goes with it in the market. So enjoy and have a good time. If you're looking for assistance, as I said, you can contact any of you can contact us on the email address, then we can be able to help. But for today, it's about looking at the market. It's about putting the market under the microscope or on the surgery table. Let's go to it. You remember that last time we were talking and we were looking at the market and looking at how it will play out for the month of for the month of, of, of for the month of September rather. Is this are moved according to what we had predicted? This inside you remember that we, we were talking about this potential head and shoulder pattern. At the time we made, we made a call for a buy. We made a call for a buy of the USD ZAR on the neckline and the price went slightly to the downside, doing some liquidity traps and then from there flocking as we always, big momentum, non-stop you can see after moving from that point, there was really few corrections, the very small corrections around 23.6 of the of corrections there, a nice impulsing to the bullish side until it touches our trade profit around the 14.50. 1470 levels. This was the shoulder we are targeting. We expected the price to drop from the shoulder. It dropped a little bit, that's a reaction, and the price again did go up for the month of October. And you can see that in the past three or four, or four days, the price is wanting to come back to the support. I will, spoke, I will speak more in detail about USDZR. But we summarize our USDZR as a trade that went to profit. Remember, for every single peak that you get, or two pips that you get, try to reserve one. One is to two, one is to three. The ones, as I've indicated on this market, that if you cannot afford to take your stop loss below this level, then you are not supposed to be trading this pair. In this case, according to us, the stop loss was not hit. The price moved slightly, looking for liquidity traps, and then go, and then going up to the shoulder. So money in the bag. Looking at the Nasdaq at the top, that's the Nasdaq chart. We looked at the Nasdaq at the top, the Nasdaq was there when, when I had made a review. It did not even move an inch to the upside. We thought it would just, those buyers would try to threaten the sellers, never moved an inch, turned from this, and then from there went back. As I'm speaking to you right now, look at how it moved according to our projection, exactly where we expected, in a month exactly. So the Nasdaq therefore dropped, as we said, right about those 1,200 points, making good money for those who were bearish with us. I was also bearish, made some few bucks there. Then from there, there it is at support. I will speak more about the Nasdaq. So gold is still holding the shoulder line. I will also be speaking about the gold. We were, we were, we were buying the shoulder, right? And that's the shoulder that we were buying. At the time, gold was at the neckline. I had given, even given an indication that those who wants to go on a sell because I could see it was bearish, they could go on a sell. We expected the euro dollar to drop a little bit, the, U, the euro yen to drop a little bit, and that is correlation. So we expected it to drop from that point, come to the come to the 1750 levels for a buy, which is where it is right now, and it did not do that. It came there, there was a reaction, but I also went in, got some reaction, and then the price went up. But remember, our stop loss is on the downside. So we are on a conservative, out, we just out just to monitor the market because we can see that it is now wanting to range on the downside. That is our analysis. So basically you can say we are still at break even on the price of gold. Two opulence effects nail the market because on the gold we are still on break even and that's a draw. The euro yen, we're also looking at this shoulder by correlation and looking at how it has done a nice impulse wave at the time we were reviewing a nice bullish impulse Right, that's what we had. The price moving there. We had projected that it should come to the shoulder line there and did a reaction. And just like gold, went to the shoulder line, bounced a little up, and the sellers came again back to the herd, 
our stop loss as we always do just below the head so according to this we were completely not kicked out the price came back went back again to the shoulder if you could see or if you do how know how to manage i would have never allowed that i would not be out so i went out again right at the neckline again you get out wait for the price to come down and then from there you are not on this trade anymore because our pattern has been invalidated in the meantime so now head and shoulder is not playing out and now we are out of the euro yen with either a positive or completely right now at a break even if you did not close your trade so we did not lose any money according to our projections on euro yen again this is two opulence zero the market there is the bullish drive that's the brand crude oil we're expecting the price to keep on giving us that nice bullish drive which is what i like a lot that's a nice bullish drive i was hoping that it will give it us from this point go further down to the 60 areas then from there it can go to the upside but we definitely were bullish but we wanted to take advantage of this resistance of the three drive bullish three drive to, to, to go to the downside moved a little bit broke to the upside and continued so in this case yes we were knocked out on this trade because the price went up and it even went above the top of the market so we had lost some 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 few points there and some few bucks so in this case this makes it two opulence fx one so in this case of the five trades that we have of the five pairs that we have done two moved accordingly three were completely dismantled especially the brand crude oil but with brand with gold and euro yen we are back to square one so we're gonna start a new portfolio for the month of october this is now the preview for the month of october how will it look like right first thing it's first things first let's start home use that I have in the in the in, in 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 the last month have shown you this pattern that the price has now kicked out the shoulder. The price has now moved to above the right shoulder of the bearish or of the head and shoulder to the downside. That said, this becomes a very big issue. If you are if you're on a trade on a buy off the shoulder, I recommend at this point that you break even because the price could continue to the upside. So, but this is how it looked like. Right, how would it look like now? This pattern looks, looks like it's in danger now because of what has happened there. It's either it invalidates, this could have been, or should, it's either it invalidates moving up, or it just indicates this point to have been a point where the price just make a false breakout of the, of the, of the, of the expected shoulder, because the shoulder can still be found even if the price does like this. But could it be what the market does? I don't think so. All right. So it could still be because it has also given some one, two, three, four, five wave structure. Perhaps not. Perhaps the price has just given one, two, three, four structure wave. In this case, it's looking for the fifth wave just to end up there, perhaps. So one would say, let's wait here and see how US desire would do. But I've got another view. The other view of UZ is that the UZ could be moving, which still valid. The UZ could be moving according to this pattern, which is an expanding triangle, one of the most volatile chart patterns ever. Not easily detectable, not easily found. But those who know the market and who follow us will know that we dig for these pairs, for these patterns, and we find them. According to this, US desire could still go to the upside and touch the 161.8 of the expansions of our Fibonacci. If you use this big wave inside, this bullish wave inside our expanding triangle. So you can see that the price moved there from there, went and touched almost the 127 of the extensions, then move up. It could go back to the 127 or then go back to the 161.8. But according to the trend line, confluence of trend line, and Fibonacci retrace, uh, expansions, the price is likely go to go, use that is highly likely to go to the 1610 levels, then drop there again, very volatile, back to the 1360s or even 1350 level. So what am I saying? 
I'm saying this is not the right time to be trading it. You would even rather be bullish. That those who can be bullish here, they could put their stop loss below the previous swing low of the market. Then from the assume this to be the swingest low right now, and then go up. The reward, the, the risk to reward is high to the upside. Perhaps even those that are looking at, at, at the bearish, which, which is what I don't prefer now, that those who are looking at sell, which is what I don't prefer now, is that perhaps they would, where would they sell? That's where the problem is. Because I would rather wait for the price to drop again, neutralize the swing low, then perhaps repeat the same pattern to the downside. So anything is possible. But I will still remain, and still, I still keep for the month of November a bullish bias. Until this level at 1545, 1450 is touched and the price respects it as a support, then you can believe that it can further make that head and shoulder pattern inside this expanding triangle. Volatility is it's, 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 it's inevitable here. But UZ is being very, very, very naughty because it, is, it has got three patterns. There is another pattern. UZ could still come, come up with another wave. There's a bullish wave, as you can see. Then the price could just want to stay within this channel, stay there, but this still gives it a bullish, bullish bias. If they, if the UZ uses this support from for the month of October, then it's easy that anybody would be wanting to buy this support and then make money. So if the price comes back there, they will be coming back to touch this point on the confluence of fib retracement and support. The oscillators will always be in your favor. Those who use some other indicators such as moving averages could be a good time for you to be looking at the 50 moving average on a daily or the 200 moving average also on lower time frames to see where it's going to take you. But it remains, if it breaks this point and you don't see that the price would be having the power to go any further down because of the channel or the, the some, same thing that you just told you. In other words, the UZ could be in the form of a diamond pattern. And this diamond pattern is extremely volatile too. Could break to the downside, not to hold for a long time, and again okay, break to the upside. Could break to the upside and then drop again to the downside in a very heavy way. So caution those who are trading UZ. We're expecting high volatility, extreme weather. In, uh, uh, further. So that's a little of a warning there. For those who like volatility, use it. It's your game. Hope you enjoy and do it safely because it's going to be a rough, rough waves that are going to be coming on the UZ for the month of October and possibly going into the month of November. I sounded like a weatherman right there. Thank you so much. This is how the Nasdaq looks like. This pattern I shared with you for the month of September. So the, the, the Nasdaq is likely to bounce from the current levels because it is the support, just the, uh, very nice demand and also it could bounce there, go back to the same point. It could just go and make a higher high, less likely according to me, could go up to the same level, then drop to the downside as I have shown last month and I'm still keeping the same setup. So we are now currently at support. Some people are waiting for a psychological 14,000 and I think it's a dangerous level, but it is possible. Because if the price can go to the 14,000, it would have broken the bullish, the, the bullish channel and it could get into problems. Yet it can still get a very nice touch the 14,000, satisfy the 127 expansion levels, then go back inside and continue. This, this is an index, a very volatile one, so it can do anything. But because it can do anything, that's why we use correlation. This is exactly what is interesting. The Nasdaq has come to the support, which, I, which I've just shared right now. Marginally, it could still touch this support. It is pretty much there. There is another one that seems like it has formed and it has been working. So the area that we see here could be the area that I have shaded with pink, could be the area where these bears could sit there and wait for more information. And I must tell you that the fundamentals may agree, perhaps the fundamentals will and may agree with this one, because this is when they stay in cash and are waiting for further information. But when they do that, they will then be waiting for the, for, 
they will be bullish and if the information is not good the nasdaq can be completely bearish i would like to keep a moderate bearish uh, thing here in the middle until such time that the price can get itself right or the fundamentals are corrected so that's one of the things that i want to monitor yes we are still on the bullish side you can see that we are still on the upside of those key support levels and if one is broken the price will be facing another one so there it is i assume that if this price can keep using this resistance from which the first resistance will still be around the 15.1 the price will drop to the 13.3 then go up make uh, pretending as if they are finding a very nice bounce but they could still go to the downside that's exactly my fear about the nasdaq so do you want to trade it currently bullish with a stop loss below the 13.6 level that's huge it's like a one is to one deal moving from here to 15.2 15,200 let's say that 15,200 points and putting a stop loss around 13,600 points it's a one is to one so it's a it's a it's kind of a one is to one game here Right, but selling from the 15.2 seems to be a very probable and a very nice point, which is what I prefer. That currently I would sell from the 15.2, triple resistance, there were triple tip top formation. And I will put my stop loss above the top and I will take the price back and I will be targeting one is to three for my take profit around 13.6. So this is how I see the NASDAQ. Currently in, the, in this week or so, if the price does not plummet further to the downside because this support has been battered and bruised. If it succeeds to bounce, it could just be giving us a very nice retracement, which others may call it a right shoulder. Then that right shoulder may react, break the neckline from which the price comes from right now, then everybody will be trading a head and shoulder pattern. And if they should they trade this head and shoulder pattern, then we know that the Nasdaq will be buried up to the 13.6. If they break the 13.6, Nasdaq will be completely bearish for the rest of the year if it can do it this if it can do it before the end of the year and it could recover somewhere around the 12,000 levels and if they don't careful Nasdaq can go back to the 10,000 levels I said if not careful no more detail details do you want to know more about how we trade indices again this is not a training and mentorship session it's just market analysis then we can again our programs are open especially for this month, for this quarter of 2021 at a lower rate. Gold is still pretty much looking like this. Downward channel on the shoulder is not a good indication because the price could use this channel, as I'm showing you right now on H4, to go to the downside. So it's not a signal, it's just to show you how it looks like. On the signal side, I, I, I would just say, look, consider Nasdaq buy, but for that one is to one, it's not a very convincing one. So this is where gold is and their price is negotiating or there's a fight around this level, this support level, which is a right shoulder of the inverse head and shoulder pattern. But we, we don't, I don't like when the fight is this fierce. That is why I would advise hold, meaning that wait, wait on gold, do not go for it first. But its bias is that it could react there. If it doesn't, gold may drop to the downside which according to correlation is highly likely to happen because of a bullish UJ and because of a bearish euro dollar. In this case, gold may drop to the 1665 levels, which is the support where it's kicking right now. Very key support for them on intraday basis. The 1670, 1670. When it comes there, it might bounce back again. And if it does, then gold will be on this channel which the resistance is found here, as I'm showing you, and the support, the resistance will be a, 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 a descending one, a channel one, together with the support at pivot of 17, 16, 17. Once it does that, then gold would have found a channel that is bearish, but which I do not trust because of the 1580 levels, which gold still needs to fulfill. So gold still needs to come to this level in order to fulfill a pattern that is on a weekly. The way we look at the weekly chart, chart that I have is that gold still have got to retest the 161 expansion levels since it broke it in 2019. So when the prices of the indices fell, gold went up during the COVID, 
for S, S security and then now dropping even for 2020, dropping for 2020 slightly and there it is. So gold could as well be finding buyers around 1550 and how will they find that? They could be using the same thing. They could be using this pattern, just drop a little bit, find another lower low on a two year basis, then find this low and then from there go up. And if that happens, then gold would have set itself up now for a higher target. Because if gold touches the 161.8 expansion, if gold moves from where it is right now, 2000, 2000 dollar per, 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 per ounce is the target. Still gonna be nicely bearish there. But if gold goes further down, it's gonna be making a very good pullback that can launch it, or that could be a launch to the 2500, 2400, dollar per ounce levels. I know you I know you don't like the sound of that. Those who've got gold portfolios, I'm sure you love the sound of that. But that to happen it means the price of the of for that to happen, it means that the price of the of, of the dollar should drop significantly. Yes it's possible. At the time when gold is 50 at around 1550, I expect the price of UJ to have been at the also at the top top, meaning that it must have made record highs in the two year to three year period. I expect the price of Euro dollar to have dropped to the lowest in the same period. And if that's the case, and if the Euro finds a very good support, which I have, and if UJ finds the good resistance, which I've already found, and gold comes to this point, then it is just a candy on a tree to be buying gold at that level. Until then, we are monitoring gold on an intraday basis. As a current, as a, as potentially bullish, potentially bearish. And we are waiting for to see where it will take us. That is about that is it about gold. Firstly, because the pound has been going up nicely to the upside. Before I can come to this chart, I would like to show you to show you the chart from which I developed from the London session. From, from, the, from the London session portfolio that I've put up. This is what I see. This is exactly where we found nicely on the expansion, touch the 161.8, bouncing back to the 100, which is our B wave there, or where the bottom of the base was. Then the price targeting the 261.8 on expansion. And if it drops, it could be finding 1.20, but that would be to take it away way too far. So there's where the 800 pips. So one single pair alone gives you the target for the month because we're targeting a thousand points. The last one is going to be Brent crude oil. Now the Brent crude oil, for the sake of those who follow, the, also again, who follow the price of oil, it's very interesting. It's very interesting, and I would not want you to lose it. The first thing is our expansions. According to expansion, Brent crude oil is now doing a consolidation or an upward uh, uh, or a rising wedge in an upward trend. This makes us to know that this bullish trend is about to fade. And for those that we taught, there's no counter trending, that's the time. But please be careful, traders. Those who have our, our game, who follow our support and resistance uh, pro, uh, program, who have joined our, I'm saying our because they're not the same. We are, we are monitoring this support and resistance proper. Please, can we just correct that? If you have got your support somewhere where the price is right now, it's not a true support. The support is slightly higher. So the price has cooled off here because it just have broken. Why did the price cool there? Because they've just broken the first, the first, the first uh, support on a pivot level. So they should be launching to go to go to the upside and touch this channel resistance, which the price is around eighty dollars to eighty two dollars, eighty three dollars. So I would I would be warning you also based on a correlation, the price of the dollar against the CAD could be dropping slightly, even if it's not dropping and consolidate, but it could cause these guys to enjoy the bullish movement, touch the 82, 83, there we expect a big drop. This is where our thing failed, our three bullish drive failed. So I am therefore making a call of a shot of Brent crude oil again after failing here at the 83, 82 levels. 82 to 83 dollar levels. Their counter trend, then drop the price. Firstly, 
up to the 261.8 only. Firstly, up to there, up to the 60. So trading from 80 to 80 to the 60 is about 2,000 points. It's not going to take a month, but we'll be monitoring it all along. We expect the price there to be showing a big bullish bearish divergence on, 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 on time frames, on time frames daily or weekly. The divergence on oscillators. I can start with MACD. The MACD on weekly is already showing some divergence. There it is. Okay. The divergence on your weekly on the MACD. I also expect that the stochastics will also, rather the, 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 the RSI should also be showing us some form of the bearish. There it is. Should be showing some form of bearish bearish divergence. So you also have got a confluence of divergences to the, to the downside. And the price will be right there at the top. So this motivates the call for me to look at the price it's moves down. I know it's going to be supported by fundamentals because already fundamentals are suggesting that the OPEC should be dropping the price. Thanks to the pressure that the US president is already giving on the OPEC plus countries. So these are fundamentals. So just wait a little bit to the high side. Hit the double top, beautiful double top there, and then job. The WTI has already reached that level. So the WTI should be the leading of selling the Brent crude oil. So this is my view. So listen, gentlemen, this is, this is the end of our market preview for the month of October. At the end, please remember that this is not financial advice. This is just our view and you will trading at your own risk. Until we meet again, the first week of November. Cheers and let there be pips.